Hello fellow YouTubers, today's little project is to make a wooden version of this air return vent. I'm going to be taking the uh, filter out of the back of it and it's going to go underneath a couple of these which are made out of MDF so I'll be placing two of them together in a wooden frame with the with the air filter underneath it I'll make a little wooden box to go around it out of some 30 by 30 right angle pine. So that's a little project at the moment. These have got to be trimmed down to go inside of the frame so it's to be the same size as the air filter itself. So let's get started. They're not coming out at all. I think they've been hammered in almost. The screws aren't actually back out. <laughs> Got the other one just in case. Well, one out. All else fails, it's just, yeah, that's what I thought. It's a pair of side cutters to get under the head and pull them out. Um, okay, next, next one. Right, that one's done. Okay, so the next thing with these is to run it through the table saw and I'm going to cut off this little box here, so just so we have the sheet of MDF left. Take all the protection off. Okay, so there it is. The end result, as you can see. So at the moment, I won't record the second one for being cut. I will cut that, but I'll do it off camera. Just so everyone doesn't have to stand or sit there and watch me doing it. Okay? <coughs> okay. Outside. Right, so just the filter. I think what we're going to do is I'm going to cut between here and here. I'm going to cut it down the centre there and the same on this side. So I'm just going to take a measurement, work out what that is, and I'll run it through the saw, and I'll probably do the same to the centres and possibly all the edges as well but I'll double check that before I do it just in case because the last thing we want to do is cut too much off because I don't even know where we got these from to be honest <clears throat> These things are great, aren't they? Absolutely fantastic little devices, really cheap and chips as chips I should say from Aldi, $20 the only issue is the little button battery always dies on you so I've modified all mine over to take 
double A. Double A lasts 12 months, 15 months, something like that. I can't remember the last time I actually changed them. So, anyway, zero, away we go. <laughs> Obviously when we're doing this, because we're cutting 12 mil off, we'll have to be careful, we'll actually have to deduct the thickness of the blade as well. So and I think the blade is two and a half, three mil, so I'll have to take that off. So it will probably be around about ten and a half mil. So I'll measure it up with a pencil and make sure that that's about what we're getting. Okay. So this is making my life easier. Pretty close, so I'll kill off about there. Let's mark that much in the safe zone in here. Some people may have noticed I'm not really a woodworker, I'm sort of a, a wood butcher, I do a little bit of everything, but uh, that's not too bad. Put it on the other one just to make sure to. Uh, these pencils, these are actually designed for children, but they're good for woodworking, so it's just a mechanical click at once, you get a bit more lead out of it. The leads are a 1.3 mil, so they're, they're pretty good to mark with. Anything finer that I need to do fine woodworking on, I would use a finer lead in it. But they're very handy. Fire for um, $6, I think it is, at um, Officeworks. So, not a bad little deal, I think. That looks pretty good, actually. Right, so we might have to don the safety gear.
that is that part. Not as straight as cut, I noticed, but I think it would be right. Now I take some measurements from this, and this is what I'm going to cut uh, the 30 by 30 wood. Knock everything as I bring it into frame. So, this is what we're going to be using. Okay, so that'll be facing that way out to go on, so it'll sit on top of the floorboards. So, I may have to cut this down, I'll have to double check how much I've actually got in here because we're going to cut the opening and it's, it'll basically be sitting right on top of the bearers. Um, or the joists, I should say, but not the bearers. So let's say 19 mil, just see how much we've got to cut off it. Yeah, we're going to have to cut at least 5 mil out of this. Okay, so I'm going to have to cut one edge down by 5 mil all the way along, rip it down on probably this thing, before I go and mitre all these corners and make a box for this to sit into. So one, when I make the box for it to sit into, and currently, so you've got that much left. Put that there. And then I'm going to put the thing over here, the filter. So I'm building it upside down currently, just so I can see what it looks like. And then there'll be something like that for it to sit onto. I may even have to rip some of this down so it's not quite as thick. Um, well, let's build it the right way. So I'm just put, that, put that down. Put this on the top of it, like so. And this will be underneath it, like that, and then I'll have to put something like this to sit the whole lot onto, like that. So that's what it will look like when it's all finished. It'll be raised up, like so. Okay. Yep, that's the way it's going to go. So that's what the vent is really going to look like, looking down onto the floor, which would be a, a lot better than this, which is what they told us we need to fit. So we've had the um, ducted heating replaced. This, uh, the original one was uh, made into a cupboard, and in the cupboard the vent, uh, the piping went th into a box. The box had a hole cut through the whole wall, and this was on the other side. So, being an open ended house, we're trying to avoid having you know stuff look like that in there. So, we really want to go with aesthetically something that looks a little bit nicer like this. And as I say, it will be in a floor sitting over the top of it. Is a chiffonier cupboard, and the chiffonier cupboard will be sitting about that high off the ground, which is about roughly 150 mil, 160 mil. So the feet will be either side of it, and there'll be plenty of airflow underneath it. So I don't see there being a real problem with that. And it's just a good way of hiding it and making it look a little bit neater. So if anyone does look at it, it won't look quite so out of place. And as it's in a, a sunroom, which is next to the dining room, so the sunroom doors open, or the, the dining room doors open into the sunroom, uh, we've just finished doing obscure glass in the sunroom because it overlooks the side street, which you have a few people who drive past who go, oh, yeah, people are in there, sort of thing. So this is trying to make it look a little bit neater, okay? So this is the way we're going at the moment. So on to making the box, but as I say, I think I'm going to have to um, rip all this stuff down. I've got two lengths of 2.4 of this. Which, the angle, as you saw before, so I'm going to have to rip all of this down to be no more than 19mm this way because, as I say, we've got hardwood floors, they're 19mm thick, so it can't go past that point. Um, I will have to build a new box underneath the floor, it will be made out of um, form ply. So it hopefully will not be sitting on the ground, but it should last for many years to come, being out of form ply, being in close proximity to the ground. Though it is quite dry under our house, so that I think that's an issue. Being the country, we are actually up reasonably high. We get a reasonable ventilation in there, so I don't see that as being too much of a problem. So 
that's the next bit after I make this, is to make the box. I've also got to cut the hole in the floor, but hey, that's not here nor there. And I've got to fill the old hole in, which is Baltic pine floors. Um, I've managed to procure a length of Baltic pine flooring at a reasonable cost, as wood prices are quite expensive at the moment. Unfortunately though, the issue I have with that is it is way thicker than what our actual floor is. And our floor, from what we can see, has never been sanded before. It's still in its original condition, which amazed the uh, floor sander who came through and sanded all the floors and clear finished it for us. So consequently, I've got to try and drop this piece of wood a little bit lower to match up with the rest of the floors. We have one room still to sand and finish, as in clear finish. So when he comes to do that, I'm going to ask him to give us a quote on doing the sunroom because that hasn't been done. And in the meantime, I will get him to sand this floorboard and clear finish it. I will make up a, basically a plug to go into the floor out of these floorboards and I'll get him to clear finish it. So when it's finished and dry, I can just drop it into the hole. Done. I may have to put a bit of seal around the edges, but we'll see how we go after that. So that's one of the little jobs that we're up to at the moment. And as we speak, I am going to start ripping all this down. I don't think you really need to watch all that. I think you get the gist of it all. So I'll be back shortly. Well, here's the finished product. As you can see, it's fallen into the floor. This is a sunroom, so it's not really going to be walked on too easily. There will be a day bed put over the top of it, so the day bed is around about this high off the ground, so plenty of air flows through. It's not going to be a big issue. This sunroom doesn't really get used, but it was a little bit uh, better to do it this way than actually leave the white melamine box sitting just inside of the uh, dining room door. The dining room uh, was turned into a bedroom at some stage during its life, but we've since turned it back into the dining room. Uh, we've removed the old wardrobe, which covered the actual uh, inlet box. So once we took the wardrobe down, well, we couldn't leave the white metal mine box, so that had to go as well. So then it was a matter of, okay, so where do we put it next? And after talking to a heating Specialist, they advised us that it would be okay to go in the floor and as long as we sort of kept it close to where it was, so it's, it's half a room away at the most, so it's not going to be a big deal. We only use this ducted heating probably this many times a year at the most because we don't really live down this end of the house. We have our bedrooms down this end of the house, but we have a family room which is behind this wall here, which is heated and that's heated three months of the year, so it's not a big deal, so this will be fine. I'll bring it up a little bit closer so you can see in detail how it all looks. The only thing I might actually do is actually glue these two pieces of uh, the MDF sheeting together because they do open up a little bit. So a little bit of glue, I think, that will be fine. There is the filter underneath and the duct and a box underneath. The box is made out of form ply. It is sitting about 150 mil above the ground. I've made sure it's nice and clear all the way around it so you can get plenty of ventilation underneath the box. The box is sealed to the bottom of the hardwood floors, so that shouldn't be any issues either there. The duct is actually extremely tight inside the box in the opening, so that shouldn't be an issue. I will actually affix the ducting to the sides of the boxes so that it can't be pulled out if anything actually happens underneath the house. Okay, I'll get back to the camera and we'll bring it up a bit closer so you can have a closer look. So we're in the dining room at the moment. Uh, this is roughly where the actual box for the return vent actually sat here on this wall. None of this was actually here before. We've added all this within the last month or so. This was a wardrobe 
all the way across and above the doorway here we've removed that since obviously and we've filled in all the wall patched it all we've, we've had a plasterer who specialised in doing these sorts of things install all these we've wallpapered and painted etc so this is where it originally sat I've had to fill in the hole where the ducting came through and I'll show you that in a second as you can see I've cut some Baltic pine floorboards and managed to fill the hole. I will uh, give them a final sand before I paint them and they'll be clear finished. I've got to fill in the edges with a little bit of wood putty, that sort of thing. And then basically this will all blend in. There will be possibly a um, chiffonier or something over the top of this. So it won't be a big problem with the floor not quite matching. Uh, it sort of will be better than it originally was in any case. Most of this floor was in pretty reasonable condition, so the floor sander told us when he came in and had a look at it. It's a bit unusual because normally they've been butchered and damaged and all sorts of things, but the floor in this house, because this is an 1800s house, looks like they black japaned around the edges, they put a big rug down, and it has not been touched for probably about 100 years because we could still see the black Japan when we pulled up the, um, the nylon carpet that was originally down here. Um, we could see underneath the, the rubberized felt where the actual original carpet sat the rug because it was still black Japan and clear finished in certain spots. So I'll, I'll give you a quick pan around this room at the moment as it is. It is full of bits and pieces because we are renovating room by room by room and we've got so much furniture that we have to keep shuffling it from one room to the next around as we're working. At the moment we're working in the what we would call the front room or the what would have been the parlour where the guests were being entertained. So that could be the next room that we're working on at the moment. So all the stuff that was in there is now in this room and up and down the hallway. We're now looking towards the sunroom, which is where the uh, vent is now located. So these are all the things we've been up to. This is just part of the room. We've managed to uh, scour the internet and the basically the Facebook marketplace and all those sorts of places. And we came across this little beauty this little gem which is now hanging in the dining room and it is a fairly big light by most people's standards it's brass it has two rows of lights the light globes are on it aren't going to stay there uh, the one that's going to go up in the parlour is almost a third bigger again than this one so this one's a smallish one, but it's appropriate for the size of the room that it's sitting in at the moment. The next room I'll take you into is what would have been considered the parlour in the 1800s, where you entertained, entertained your guests. That has to have a new uh, rose put up, like similar to this one, maybe a bit bigger. But the light is about another 30% bigger again. So it, we were, the story we were told was it was the little sister of the light that hangs in the Windsor. Where in the Windsor? I don't know, but we'll wait and see. So at the moment that's being restored before it goes up. We'll cut to the next room. This is the parlour, which we're at the moment doing a bit of painting, a bit of repair work, old plaster, has a tendency to crack, so there's a few cracks here that have got to be finished. 
the moment, so I'm working up there in the corners. That's why we've got the scaffolding there, because it's a bit tall for most spiders to work comfortably. So it's a reasonable size room. It's I can't remember exactly how many metres, but it's a reasonable size. Now I flip the camera around and show you some of the other end. And there you have it. That's pretty much it. So until the next video, enjoy.